human civilization stretches back thousands of years. But compared to the age of the Earth, we humans have only just arrived. The Earth is really old. If you take the entire history of the Earth from 4.6 billion years ago to the present, and to call that an hour, the first 50 minutes are largely spent in a world of microbes, single-celled organisms. Animal life appeared in the last 10 minutes of that hour. All of human history, our civilization, our evolution, happened in the last hundredth of a second of that hour. We've come quite late to the party. But we've been shaped by the same forces that have helped shape all life on Earth. To understand how we fit in, we need to look back to long before our own origins, to see how other living things evolved. Whales are the largest living animals. Like us, whales and dolphins took on their present forms relatively recently. For a long time, the origin of these marine mammals was a scientific mystery. Whales are so different from every other kind of mammal that we can't easily relate them to anything else. And so they're off by themselves as a branch of mammal evolution. Mammals first appeared on Earth around 200 million years ago on land. Mammals are warm-blooded. They give birth to living young and they breathe air. These are all adaptations to living on land. But whales and dolphins are mammals too. They're mammals that live in the water. But we know that mammals evolved on land. So it's a real puzzle how whales originally evolved. By understanding how that happens, we'll begin to understand how these big jumps, these big transformations happen generally. People are interested in whales, and I can understand. They're so beautiful. And Their origin so is such a mystery. Whale. Whales are one of the few groups of mammals that have really large, complicated hey, brains like we do. And so in a sense, there are alter egos living in the sea while we live on land dominating the sea while we dominate land. And I think for that reason, we're very interested in what goes on there, how they got there as a reflection of our own history through geological time. When Phil Gingrich began his career 30 years ago, he knew nothing about whales, and that was just fine with him. He was drawn to geology mostly because he couldn't imagine a career spent behind a desk. I think I was interested in geology because it was a science outdoors. And in geology, I became interested in paleontology because it was about life and the history of life. Gingrich's early interest in primitive land mammals eventually took him to Pakistan. It was there that he made the kind of find most paleontologists only dream about, a fossil that would rewrite one of evolution's greatest stories. I found the back of a skull that I couldn't identify. It had a very good, well-preserved ear region, and that offered the clue to what it was. The shape was familiar, but in other ways, it was like nothing Gingrich had ever seen. This is the original specimen. It's the one we found in about 1978. There are several things that strike you. One is it's very similar in size and shape to the back of a skull of a wolf. But there was something odd about this skull. On its underside was a walnut-sized bump. If this wasn't here, I would think that this was an archaic carnivorous mammal, what we call a creodont. But it is here. It was part of the animal's inner ear and it had a distinctive shape. A shape found today in only one kind of animal, whales. What was the ear of a whale? 
doing on the skull of an animal that resembled a wolf. Gingrich was intrigued, so he constructed a model of what the creature's full skull might have looked like. He wondered, was his find a crucial missing link? The first fossil evidence ever found for one of Darwin's most daring claims, that whales had evolved from land mammals. To know for sure, Gingrich would need to find more fossils, ones that would show each stage of the whale transformation, what scientists call transitional forms. I want to line them all up. I want anyone to be able to see it and believe it because they've seen it. Gingrich tried to return to Pakistan to resume his search, but war had broken out and the borders were closed. Frustrated, Gingrich decided to look elsewhere. He had heard stories about whale skeleton sightings in a very unlikely place. So he decided to check it out for himself. The Sahara Desert is one of the driest places on Earth. But 40 million years ago, things here were quite different. This used to be the sea. Just think of this being the current Mediterranean coast of Egypt backed up about 40 million years, about 100 kilometers to the south of where it is today. Here, and what had once been the southern Mediterranean Sea, is a 100 square mile stretch of layered sandstone with a surprising name. Valley of the Whales. The name is well suited. Scattered everywhere across this arid landscape are what look like heaps of rose-colored stones. Here's a Basilosaurus. But they're not stones. You can see how big the vertebrae are. Here's a lumbar partly weathered away. They're whale skeletons, 40 million years old. There's another one back here coming out of the mushroom. There's one over here. And back over there's one. This whole place is full of whales. Why were there so many whales concentrated in this one spot? Gingrich believes that Whale Valley was once a protected bay, a lagoon hidden from the open sea by underwater sandbars. Perhaps the whales birthed their young here and came here to die. But even with hundreds of whale bones at his feet, Gingrich was disappointed. Nearly all of the skeletons belong to a whale called Basilosaurus, a 40 million year old creature already known to science. Basilosaurus lived full time in the water. If whales had evolved from land mammals, they had done so long before Basilosaurus. So Gingrich didn't think the bones would be of much interest. But he couldn't have been more wrong. After only a few days of digging, he made his second amazing find. It turned out that Basilosaurus had something modern whales have long since lost. For the first time, we've got whales that have legs. The bones were small, but unmistakable. A pelvis. A kneecap. Even toes. This whale had a complete set of leg bones. Gingrich brought back as much of the skeleton as he could carry. It was dramatic evidence that whales had once been four-legged animals. 
Since Gingrich's finds, he and others have filled in more of this fantastic story. Scientists now think that the earliest ancestor of whales was similar to this 50 million year old wolf-like mammal called Synonyx. Synonyx was a predatory scavenger that lived and hunted along the shores of an ancient sea. Perhaps its descendants found the water a source of abundant food and a haven from competition. Over millions of years, front legs became fins, rear legs disappeared, bodies lost fur and took on their familiar streamlined shape. Since Gingrich's first find, named Pecasetus, the list of known transitional whales has grown. It now includes Ambulocetus, Rhodocetus, Duridon, as well as Basilosaurus. They reveal another element of whale evolution, the gradual migration of nostrils to the top of the head as whales adapted to breathing in the water. How did whales lose their legs? As the years went by, they evolved into newer types of... Gingrich's work demonstrates what Darwin himself insisted, that the evidence for evolution is all around us if we choose to look for it. And bones aren't the only evidence of whale evolution. Their ancestry is also visible in the way they move. Frank Fish studies how today's marine mammals swim. He looks for their evolutionary heritage in the way they move through the water. The big question is, how do you go from a terrestrial mammal that ran around on all four legs to something such as a dolphin, which now doesn't have any legs at all and is well adapted to swimming in the oceans? Even though whales look like fish, they don't swim like them. Fish swim by flexing their spines from side to side, like the shark. But mammals swim differently. This otter swims by undulating its spine up and down, in exactly the same way that whales do. And, as it turns out, in the same way that land mammals use their spines when running. Whales took with them into the water their ancestral way of moving, and we can still see it 50 million years later. In one sense, evolution didn't invent anything new with whales. It was just tinkering with land mammals. 